So you just arrived? Yeah. When? From short time ago, like three weeks ago. First time in Armenia? Yeah. Yeah, I'm and discovering it. I will come back later. Okay. I don't know when exactly, but I will, not sure. I came in a collective project. We created from the base of genocide. We were six photographers, three in Turkey, three in Armenia. Four in Armenia, actually, two in Turkey. And we shared the, we took each one away of, uh -huh. of point of view. Me, I was based on the new, new generation, contemporary Armenia. But one of us is in Karabakh. One of us is in and Istanbul. And the link is genocide? Yeah. So do you have to speak about genocide or you can... S no, 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 no. We, we start from the story of genocide to take different ways to, to ask about the Armenian situation, Armenian society. And you all photograph? We are five photographers five. and one uh, author. And do you, five of you, do you don't have any connection with Armenia or Turkey? The author is, she's not photographer, she's uh, from Armenia diaspora. Okay, and the four others? We don't have any no link. No connection no. with Armenia? No. Oh, that's interesting, okay. Yeah, it was really interesting actually. Yeah, it is, it's okay. still. What's and about you? Uh, me, I, I arrived in Armenia like uh, one year ago, like in March 2014. And I will leave for good Armenia this June. And at first I came to... I mean, it's always difficult for me to say that to Armenians because usually when they ask me, you know, like, uh, why did you come to our beautiful yeah. country? I say I came to kind of study corruption. Yeah. It was not, I mean, this was the reason why I came. But the reason why I stayed was because of the people that I discovered and like, you know, the, the country. You didn't so, expect to, to stay? No, I didn't expect to stay so long. That's, that's for sure. I, I expect to stay like, you know, maybe six months, one year, but not that much. And so, yeah, I mean, at the beginning I was uh, working like a, as an intern, like in a in a, in a media, and uh, and then I started to like to teach at AUA, and uh, and I was involved in theater project with some Armenian and Turkish actors, and uh, so I really I think I, and I traveled a lot in like in the in the region in everything. Last weekend I was in Karabakh. I mean, my perception of Armenia yeah. from the very beginning yeah. to now has changed really a lot. Really? I mean, the thing is like, you know, the first two months I was busy doing like, you know, a lot of interviews for my thesis about corruption. So interviews with like, you know, a lot of people, activists, international organization, journalists, whatever. And after two months, you know, like I realized that, you know, the topic I was studying, like it was pointless or to, to write anything more about it because everything is, is clear here. Yeah. And uh, what is clear? That, that there's a lot of corruption. Everyone knows about it, but yeah. nothing changed basically and uh, and then I stayed because I discovered like uh, I mean the first the first six months I discovered like an energy that I couldn't find in France you know like new project maybe it was because of the environment I was working in you know like media and university no I think that I can feel it too you see yeah. when you when you first arrive yeah. here you can feel this energy like from yeah. to create and to make something you know good for the country and everything exactly like not from a lot of people but from the, some yeah. people that you meet you yeah. really feel like you know this this passion to like you know try to change something in this yeah. country and um, so I was, I was really like uh, into that, you know, like uh, a lot of people around me and, you know, the environment I was working and everything. There was this, you know, like, uh, uh, I don't know, this energy to change something. There is this, this challenge, like, you know, something has to change in this country. Like, you know, yeah, it cannot just like, wait. It's like people still think and believe that they can change the society and they can build something that we don't have in France anymore. I think few people in Erevan too. Yeah. Because it's really different from the countryside, I think. Yeah, I really think. Thing. Yeah. Have you been like outside of Yerevan? Yeah, sure. Where, where did you go? I went around Yerevan. I went to the countryside. I went to Karabakh too. Uh -huh. But so you I, saw like yeah. you know like the on the road you know like a uh, lot of villages that are like quite empty or like yeah. they are like quite yeah. yeah. And that's that was interesting to me. Yeah. I realized yeah. that a lot of people, a lot of young people, didn't born here. Yeah. So they, they are Armenian from outside. They have roots from Armenia, but they they born in another country and they decide at one moment to come here. And that's really interesting because I met other young people who wanted to go out from the, this country. So mm. that's interesting for me. And so what what do you feel like? Because you've been here for like you know like three weeks. Yeah, how, how do you feel like you know the situation here? In general? Yeah, because I would like to see if you're feeling the same thing as I was feeling last year. It's a quite difficult question. 
I, I don't I don't know what to answer you because I, I feel a really nice energy mm -hmm. like what you said just before but in the same time I really feel this society life really controlled and really by the political way yeah. by um, the government by the, the, the economic way it's really really hard I feel a really nice energy from some young people not not everyone, but some here in Erevan, I can feel that people, young people, want to change this society. They they have some dream for this this country, but in the same time, I don't know if they can realize that. Some of them told me that you cannot do anything in this country because of the economic points and because of the politics and everything but I met other people who told me that if you want to do something here if you really want to do something you can do it. well that's true if you really want to do something yeah. you can do if you want yeah. really to make a create an industry a company it's not so easy here I just I really speak about little things you know and more services and you know no, you're right I think that like uh because, I mean, there's this case of Carrefour, I don't know if you heard about it, but Carrefour, they spent like four years trying to settle here. Now they opened like a, a, a shop like, you know, like uh, eight months ago, but it was very difficult, even for like a, a, sh uh, a brand like Carrefour, you know, like to settle in a very little market like Armenia. No, for me, what was crazy is that, you know, the, do you know the system of a down, the concert? Did, yeah. did you go? No. I heard I was working in the media center really close, so I heard by the window, but I didn't. Because what was crazy is like for me, like you know, I was sure that April 20, like 2015, would be you know like full of you know depressing story, you know like everywhere speaking about you know how how victim we are, how bad it was, and everything. And the two things we spoke the most about was Kim Kardashian yeah. Yeah. coming and like yeah. considering who she is, and you know like she's not you know like uh, she's really like you know always under the lights, yeah. under like, you know, like bright and everything, whether or not we have a good opinion about her or not, but she, she represents yeah, yeah, yeah. a bright side of Armenia, not the dark side about, you know, complaining about her yeah. past or whatever. And then the second thing we spoke the most was the concept of System of a Dawn, yeah. who are also like, you know, energy, music, you know, like uh, sound and everything in the, in the center of Yerevan. And for me, I was like, Once again, I was surprised by, by Armenia because I was just like, the very months where, you know, like we should have had, you know, like a sad commemoration, you know, with candles, with people crying and everything. In fact, what we had is like, you know, like a big concert, like hard road concert in the middle of Yerevan, the eve of the 24th. I think this is... The and this is great. I think yeah, this is great. And it's, it's at the image of what happened in this country, actually. I, I think, I really think that there is a big gap big difference between this generation and the new oh, yeah. one yeah. and the old one. This generation, I, I, I feel that maybe they will change it because they didn't knew the Soviet Union. Well, they knew it, but not so much. And so, so maybe they can build something new, you know, not, not yes. get stuck to the past. And yes, this I mean, system of the done, this concert, it was full of young people who get the same energy and what the, what the band say, you know, they, they, they spoke about the government and the, the present society and what they have to do and everything. So like, maybe it was a representation about what this young generation wants. I don't know. I hope. You know, there's, there's three things that I want to share with you about, you know, the things that I, I, I realized during this year. Like first, an anecdote is like, there was a, a teacher at AUA who did this exercise with, their, with her students. The exercise was, imagine that you were like, you're taking the elevators and there's the Ministry of Education, the Armenian Ministry of Education, taking the elevator with you. You have exactly like one minute to tell him something about, you know, what needs to be changed in this country in terms of education. Just, you know, for the elevator to go upstairs. You have one minute. What would you say? And there's this girl who said, I wouldn't say anything to this guy. I will just say, wait. 
because I know that this guy has nothing to do with education. Will, I will never do anything with education. I will just say, wait, wait that we're coming. Our new generation that really yeah. care about our country, yeah. that really deeply care about yeah. our country. But the second thing is that I feel that for me, uh, they will never be able to like to change something here if the issue of genocide is not resolved. What I mean by this is that I, I, I'm deeply convinced here that uh, the genocide is actually the big elephant in the room. Here the genocide is everywhere, in the media, yeah. uh, in the project that people are funding here. Everything is connected to the genocide. It's present all the time. No one discusses about it. So you'll never be able to remove the, the genocide. Yeah. All, and the young generation is occupying the space that is left in the room for their own personal dream, their own yeah. personal, you know, like a project. Yeah. But the thing is like, if they don't address this elephant in the room, they will never be yeah. able to have more space yeah. for the life and everything. If the government focus on this this genocide, that sure it's important. Sure, I don't say that, but it's a way to to you know yes. forget and to focus on it. You don't see all the problem of the society. But this is why no? I was I was about to tell you that is like when I say the ge the genocide is the elephant in the room is that it's either used as a way to unify like the population of course i'm not you know like um, i'm not armenian and i, I cannot, cannot really see it. but from what i saw is that here there's a kind of solidarity of people as are united yeah. for the genocide yeah. otherwise yeah. if yeah. you don't speak about the genocide people they are fighting against yeah. each other here you know like i was i had a i asked a question like to my student i say you know like if you were president of armenia what would you ask if you had like you know something to ask to turkey i say would you ask financial compensation they say yes yeah. And I say, okay, if, uh, if Turkey agree, what do you think would happen? They say nothing, because our government will take all the money. So yeah, you see, like, before, yeah. before even like yeah. speaking about the... the, the, the yeah, yeah, it's yeah. very connected to that, yeah. and it's like... Yeah. So they, they address the question of genocide, I think, in the, um, in the, in the wrong way. Like, you know, like, uh, and here, when you see like, surveys and studies, people, they say, our first preoccupation is not genocide. It's jobs. It's yeah, you know, like it's yeah, exactly. uh, it's secu yeah, economic yeah. security for the for the diaspora. Yeah, it's it's, exactly. it's the genocide. Yeah. So this is and and the government. I agree with you. It's it's using that to like you know, and for me there should be like a unity around something else around you know this desire to build a new country but to like you I, know. I feel this unity from the young young generation. I really feel yes? it. And yeah, well, yeah, a lot of them told me like, politic is a shit here, yeah. and. This government is a shit, and even if we change of government, it will be the same and the same. And so we don't care anymore about politics, and we are making what we can around us. Which is actually funny because it's a little bit what's happening in France also. You know, more and more, and more people yeah, are yeah, saying yeah, yeah. we don't care anymore about politics. We're going to create uh, around yeah. us. Yeah. It's it's really that's, like a, that's really yeah. I agree with you. But the only thing here in Armenia is that this generation, part of it, and especially like leaders, people that knows yeah. and everything, they're just going away from the country. Yeah. So this change that this that, new generation would bring yeah. will, might take much longer because here there's these new like uh, parameters that it doesn't exist in a lot of countries that yeah. people yeah. are leaving. Yeah. So they are not the driving force for the change. Yeah, but, but, but you're right about that. And I thought when I start to work here, I thought that I will work about that, about young people who leave the country. No, but, but, one. but I realized that I was wrong about that. I met some people, some young people who wanted to leave, but a lot of them finally told me, yeah, I want to leave to have a good education, so I want to, to be educated myself in, outside in Europe, and, but I want to come back because I want to, with this education, to make something for my country. Really? Yeah, oh. like a nationalist, you know, way of thinking. And after that, so there is this kind of, of young people. And I was speaking to you like about young people from outside who told me like, I came here, I decided to come here to make something to my country. I feel more Armenian than the country where I, where I come from. And I want to do something for my country. So maybe, okay, maybe I was wrong. There is some young people who want to go out from this country, but a lot of others want to make something. So maybe, you know, You know what can be, the, I think, for me, the hope is that this new generation, not only of like Armenians from the diaspora, but Armenians from here, they're traveling more and more. Yeah. So the Armenians from the diaspora, from the new generation, they know much better what is really Armenia. 
above, you know, the imagination of, you know, the yeah, yeah. marvelous country and suffer from genocide. This is the old generation of diaspora that thinks like this and the founding charities and everything. The new generation of diaspora, they're coming here, they know exactly what's happening. And the people from Armenia, more and more, they're traveling so they can be in touch with the diaspora and telling them, guys, this is exactly what's happening in our country, yeah. okay? We might not need, you know, like the things that we've been, like the money you've been giving us for like those kind of projects for the last 20 years. We might need like this money, but for other kind of projects. Yeah. And now, you know, like the young generation that comes, you know, as you say, like two years, three years, yeah. maybe they stay, maybe they come back, but still when they will come back, they will speak about Armenia. They will say, you know, this is what's happening. And it's actually very challenging. Yeah. And me, maybe yeah. I can do something. And you also, if you want yeah. to visit. Yeah. And I think it's a shame because when you go to the south of Armenia, me personally, I've traveled like in a lot of country, yeah. The south of Armenia is beautiful, like, you know, and they're not even like able to build like a, a good road to visit, yeah. but they could like on tourism, Armenia could be like the next spot yeah. in the South Caucasus. Yeah. For me, it's, it's obvious that like, yeah. you know, there's so many like potential here. Yeah, sure. And I feel like, you know, like a lot of people here, like whether they are like, you know, journalist, entrepreneur, um, research or whatever they want to do something but there's no support at all from yeah. the government because the government is just you know and this is like such a shame because you yeah. see that it's uh, officially there's three million people in armenia but we know that there are between yeah. two million one hundred thousand and two million four hundred thousand yeah. yeah. and we know that there are approximately fifty thousand people living every year which is it's, it's a lot i mean it's really yeah. like in 20 years if nothing changed it's yeah. it's over and people who are living it's not the old people or no, no, it's, it's no, like no. active yeah. people yeah. so it's like people that could like you know build a country that could innovate in a country those are the people that are living so for me like you know like if nothing changed radically like in the next even 10 years i mean there's a serious like a uh, threat i mean yeah. I'm, I'm really concerned yeah. about that like uh, how are you gonna do like i mean you don't have any more population you are like among like you know like countries that don't like you when i speak to a lot of like you know like uh, young people here young armenians whether they are you know like uh, mo mostly like you know activists i would say um they're struggling inside because you know like there's this like collective challenge that is we need to save this country and we need to fight for a country and we need to change something in this country and I think for French people it's the same. At some point you need to, you, you have to say, and you can say, you know, I'm, I'm a citizen of the world, I can go wherever I want. Yeah. But at some point, I mean, France brought you kind of a lot of things and you need, if you see that something is going wrong in your country, you want to do something. So you have this kind of collective, you know. But at the same time here, I mean, the new generation think of themselves as more like individual. So they also have the dream and they say, should I really sacrifice myself yeah. for this country? Yeah. Especially if it will change in 30 years. What will I be in 30 years? Yeah. Because me, I also, I'm an individual. I have dreams, I have life. I want yeah. also to... So you see, like, it, it's very difficult to struggle this. Yeah, yeah, and that, yeah, you're right. And the real issue is, like, will they come back after, you know, they, yeah. they see I the see world, they right. see, like, you know, will they come back but if... You, I, yeah, if they come back, if they come back. Because me, I'm, I'm sure that they will come back if something changes here. Yeah. If something starts to change, a lot of people in uh, of Armenians will come back. It's bad because I think that for me Armenia has everything to, to build a great future but still it's stuck in the present and in the past. Do you, do you think that there is a change now in those times? What we call new Armenia and things like that? Do you really think... I, I see the change as we were saying at the beginning of the conversation is like... What helped me to stay here is the people around me that were making a change. Whether it was journalists, you know, like doing great journalism stuff. Great journalism report about something that is really like relevant about changes in Armenia or like entrepreneurs yeah. or uh, actors who are trying to give another point of view about this society, you know, like to laugh about the society, you know, like trying to like, you know, get out of this, you know, like this depressing, like, you know, like environment. So this, I believe in that, but still it's a, it's, it's a minority. And I saw also a lot of my friends leaving during this year. Yeah. I saw some of my friends, Armenian, Armenian friends, friends, yes, who left. So, and very good people that could have done like a change here by the project, by what they were doing, by the way they were seeing the environment. And so at, at the end, uh, you know, like uh, me as, as, a, as an individual, as a French, I took the decision to leave because of the society that I, I, I don't share the values. For me, there's two things that I really, I cannot stand anymore here. And even if I understand why people react like this, is like, you know, when, for example, you're in a line, here waiting for something a lot of people will go just in front of you even if you've been waiting for i don't know like 15 minutes someone will just come in front of you will not will not apologize or whatever will just you know like do his stuff and then go without like oh 
or when you're like driving in a car or whatever, like they're like it's it's crazy. They, they, they do not wait as if they were you know like uh, so pissed off as you know like how the the, the this lack of solidarity between people. People are, are, they have solidarity among families, among you know like extend, extended families in their network in their like. But as a society, as a nation, I feel it's big. It's yeah. It's 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 not enough. Like you know like uh, and you know when you are like attending protests here, yeah. people they are saying something like we want to own our country. In France, people will never say that because we know that we own our country in a way. We we know that you know. And here there's no like I feel there's no unity. And me, I want to live in a country where you feel a little bit of unity, where you know like okay, let's work together to go somewhere. Here you can feel this energy of working together among like you know. Uh, people are really committed to change something. They're really, but still, I like it. it I like uh, it, there's, there's this unity that is lacking here. And maybe this new generation will bring this unity. Okay. How will we want to have our country in 20 years? We want our country to be, you know, like this, like this, like this. Not, you know, not a unity based on victims of, of, and this is like something that is lacking here that I'm missing here. One thing I wanted to tell you about is that, you know, like, um, you know, we were speaking about the, the, the diaspora and Armenians. Something that for me could work is the example of Tumo. It's a, it's a, it's a couple from the US uh, Armenian diaspora who founded this uh, creative center of, for technology. And every kid can attend like a workshop uh, activities for free. And here kid you get from all Armenia or? All Armenia, wherever. I mean, you can come from a village, from Yerevan, from Vanadzor, from uh, wherever. You come, you don't have to show any like uh, ID or whatever. You just, you just enter and then you can start working on your computer activities. And the more you learn, the more you succeed in activities, the more you get points, the more you can attend other workshops, the more you can, you know, get skills. And the more you can, you know, be ready to work or to like innovate, and a lot of like, you know, kids that came out of Tumo, they created, you know, like music band, um, uh, yes, music band, like uh, uh, innovative companies and everything, really like uh, competitive in, on an international level. You know, like uh, Kenny West when he came here, he visited Tumo. I mean, this is like because, and Tumo is like um, upstairs. They have like uh, PixArt, and PixArt is like it's a big, big, big companies, and they have their research and creative center in Armenia. The, and the, the rest is based in the US. But here you can see really a connection between the Armenian diaspora and the Armenians here. And this bridge can actually achieve great results. And when I saw that, even me from, I mean, I never saw that in France, never. Yeah. And I saw that in Armenia. I was just like, how is this, how is that possible? And, um, and so for me, this is something that really can, uh, as we were saying, you know, like building something, not with the government, not against the government, yeah. but, you know, create an alternative saying, okay, We've been living like this. Now let's try something else. Let's try to innovate in like, you know, be innovative in like technology, be innovative in like design, be innovative in, in like a, And this is for me like, you know, touch of hope that I saw like this during my, in my year, you know, like a theater, Tumo, American University, media, some media. And like, I could see really like in different parts of the society, there are different people that really want to change something. And maybe at some point, all those little like points of hope will connect and will do like a, a change. But when is the question? Like, it will change, but when? In two years, in three years, in 10 years? What does it mean to change? I don't know. I know you, you, will, you will tell me like, oh. Yeah, maybe. Yes. <laughs> in one year, we'll meet again, you know. And <laughs>